Hey y'all, what's up? It's the Electrical Code Coach here. This is the Electricians in Action. Let's go ahead and get to it. We're continuing in our video series on wiring detached garages, sheds, and buildings. On the first part of this video, we learn when you're not required to drive a couple ground rods, aka establish a grounding electrode system. Yesterday, we learned when you are required to establish a grounding electrode system. Today, we're going to be talking about if you're feeding a sub panel out to this garage, okay? And the two questions that we're going to look at, and this is the most important piece of this whole puzzle, is whether or not we run three or four wires from the existing structure and whether or not we separate grounds and neutrals when we get out there, okay? So, in this scenario, we're going to come out of the existing structure with our conduit. We're going to pipe over to the garage, shed, outbuilding, whatever. We're going to stub up and we're going to set a panel, okay? Now, the question is, do I run three or four wires? So, we get in our conduit, okay? The first thing that we know based off yesterday's lesson is that we must establish a grounding electrode system. Two ground rods, footing ground, whatever satisfies the grounding electrode um, you know, parts of the code. The next thing that we're getting ready to do is we're getting ready to feed this building, okay? We're going to feed it with a hot, hot, neutral. Now, here's the magic question. Are we required to run an equipment grounding conductor? And the answer is yes. We must install an equipment grounding conductor, okay? And all of this is going to be found in um, 250.32 A and B, okay? We've been in part A, now we're getting into part B. So you must feed this structure with four wires. If you're feeding a separate detached building from a building, we're imagining that we're putting in a sub panel for one that's going to require us to establish a grounding electrode system. Then in order to feed this building, you're required to install four wires, two hots, a neutral, and a ground if you want the full 240 volt value. Okay? You know, logic may tell us or electrical experience may tell us if we're establishing a grounding electrode system out of the structure, why do we have to run four wires? And that's a great question. That's one I even ask myself. You know, are we not creating a path that, you know, lightning may strike and ride up one side and down the other? And that very well may be the case. But as far as the code's concerned, and it's very practical, we must run that fourth wire. Now we have to ask ourselves, when we get out there with these four wires, do we separate grounds and neutrals or do we bond them? And that's a super important question, one that we have to be very careful. You know, there's only a few critical things in an install. Ampacity, overcurrent, and grounding. If you hit those three points there, most installations, as long as they're torqued and tightened correctly, are going to be virtually safe. As long as those three points are hit. Of course, we need to hit all the other codes too for longevity. But as far as practical life safety, grounding and bonding, ampacity, and overcurrent protection, okay? Proper overcurrent overload, whatever you're dealing with. So in this case, if we fed this structure with the four wires and we did it you know, the right way, we ran the four wires, when we get over to this other structure, we must actually separate the grounds and neutrals, okay? And the reason is, is we do not wanna create any objectional current and allow it to flow back on any metal parts of the building that we're in, any of the metal components, and, and then all the way back to the source, okay? If you've never seen my video on when and why to separate grounds and neutrals, I highly recommend going to check it out. I'll put a link down in the description below, okay? It's called the ultimate guide of when and why to separate grounds and neutrals, and it'll explain the science of why we separate grounds and neutrals at all. But just to recap for today, we're in 250.32 A and B. We must establish a grounding electrode system if we run that panel. We must also install an equipment grounding conductor in that pipe. And then we must also separate grounds and neutrals when we get out to that structure. Structure, Being sure to bond all of the, ground, uh, the grounding parts that need to establish the grounding, uh, excuse me, the, the effective ground fault path. So we need to bond the can to the ground bar, okay? We also need to bond all the other metal parts in that building that are required to be bonded. And what we're doing is creating an effective ground fault path, okay? And what that's going to do is if there's ever a fault or a circuit shorting or any type of leaking current, it's gonna ride on that insulated uh, equipment ground all the way back to the source and not flow on any and all paths back. 
So when we get out to that structure, we must separate grounds and neutrals, establish all of our grounding according to code, and make sure, most of all, that we do bond that can to the grounds, okay? Because the temptation is, is, hey, you pull the green ground screw out, it separates the grounds and neutrals maybe, but what if those ground bars are isolated, okay? So when you get done with that can, you need to make sure the can itself, which is the frame of the panel, is connected to all the grounds out in that garage or shed. And then you make, need to make sure the neutrals are isolated up off that can and that they're separated from the grounds and neutrals. I am the electrical code coach. I just want to see you guys win. If there's anything you need from me, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. And my bargain is, is that these videos will add value to you. And then in turn, you will add value to someone else. So go out there today, find someone to serve, find someone to invest in. You know, one of my favorite proverbs says it like this. It says, he who waters will himself be watered. Okay, so as you're learning and growing in your skills and your knowledge and you're watching videos, you're filling up your watering can. Okay, and then you can go take that watering can and dump it out on somebody else. Okay, I know it's kind of a silly illustration, but this is what it is. Your knowledge and experience and life skills, I don't have those. Those are unique to you. You have skills that I don't have. You have experiences that I don't have. And what you can do is you can fill up your bucket with those experiences. And then you find someone else who's just a young plant in the game and you dump that water on them. And what's amazing about this promise is, is that if you water someone else, there's already someone over here on a higher level than you filling their watering can. And as you water someone else and help them grow, somebody at a higher level than you is on their way getting ready to water you. So the proverb goes like this, he who waters will himself be watered. And it's saying if you invest your time, your talent, your experience, and your connections into someone else, there's already someone else at a higher level getting ready to invest in you. It's a promise. It's waiting on you, okay? So I just want you to always remember that. If you water, you will yourself be watered. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm.